right, folks, this isn't just a regular hybrid hunting rifle. This is a takedown hybrid hunting rifle. Hello there, folks, and welcome back to Bolts for Bucks. My name's Steven, and today I have something very exciting to show you and to review for you. That's the Seiko, or Sako, if you want to pronounce it correctly, S20 Hybrid Hunting and Precision Rifle. Now, today we're going to be going over the precision configuration of this rifle, and then in a later video, we'll be going over the hunter version of this rifle. And uh, we'll also be doing a video where we go in depth and take apart the stock and show you the mini chassis in the future as well as a range review. So you want to make sure and subscribe and stay tuned for those. But let's dive right in here. Now this rifle I had some reserve feelings about as the stock is a polymer outer with an internal embedded aluminum chassis. And I'm not really a fan of the external polymer, but once I got it and played with it, I gotta say, I'm kinda turning into a big fan because this thing has some really innovative features as well as you can tell they really paid attention to detail. This is available in 6.5 Creedmoor, 308 Winchester, 243 Winchester, 30-06 Springfield, 6.5 PRC, 7mm Rem Mag, and 300 Win Mag. This one happens to be 300 Win Mag, and it is a 1 in 10 twist. Some of the older models to be aware of are 1 in 11 twist. I do recommend you go with that 1 in 10 twist. They do come with a cold hammer forged barrel, and this one features a 24 inch length barrel that has beautiful straight fluting about half the length of the barrel, as well as it has a very nice Cerakote job on it, so it's rust corrosion and abrasion resistant, which I really like, especially if you're gonna be hunting in places such as Alaska, where the humidity and rainfall is high. This is threaded 5 8 by 24, it does come with a beautiful thread protector, but it does not come with an included muzzle brake, so that is something to note. It comes with a very nice machined all metal uh, receiver that is milled flat on one side to shed weight and it does have an integral part of the receiver Picatinny scope base rail on it. Um, I would like to see, see this be 20 MOA built into it, but instead it's zero MOA, so that is something to note. However, the fact that it comes with this beautiful all-one-piece integrated rail as part of the receiver means that you don't have to worry about the rail coming loose, working itself loose, and you don't have to buy one separately. It also comes with a very nice removable and interchangeable bolt knob. This one features the tactical large all metal bolt knob that is heavily grooved so you can grab it even when your fingers are wet. And like I said, it features this polymer chassis with an internal full length aluminum mini chassis basically molded into it. It does have a plastic trigger guard. I would like to see that be metal, but it does appear to be high quality plastic. All right, coming to the rear, you have a very nice pliable soft rubber recoil pad that is quite sizable. It's a little bit uh, firm, more firm than a Ruger American, but uh, not so hard as maybe a Tika T3X. And by the way, the Seiko or Sako is made in Finland. I believe in the same factory is the Tikas and it is owned by Beretta Group. One thing that people forget to mention is that this comes with a spacer system so that you can easily remove or add spacers to adjust the length of pull, which is very nice. Um, on either side of the buttstock is a flush, or I should say not completely flush, QD cup. It does stick out just a little bit, and I believe it is part of the internal aluminum chassis, so it's nice and solid. I really am glad that they used these QD cups rather than traditional sling swivel studs. And I'm also glad that the orientation of them is on the sides and not the bottom, as that ergonomically is better for tactical shooting. Then coming forward, you have this very nice modernized stock where it has a cutout on the bottom side, then comes down into a nice layout or flat area, which makes for a really good bed uh, rest onto a rear um, sack so that it, you get really nice controlled, even recoil control. Also on the bottom here is a very nice aluminum M-lock adapter so you can add a monopod to the rear or a big slide. Then coming forward, you have this nice groove here. You can use that to grab the rifle or put your off hand to get nice support and adjust that bag. Coming to the top, you have a very easy to adjust comb and this is one of my favorite features of this rifle. You simply push down on this tab and you can adjust this and it has markings so that you know where you want it 
and where you were previously adjusted at. So you can actually measure and adjust this appropriately and you could mark it with a pen or something so that you know where you like it at. It's very easy to adjust and it's relatively st stable. There's not a whole lot of play in it once it's in place. Coming forward, I have a substantial palm weld. In fact, it's quite large. It feels um, more like a tactical or PRS style uh, uh, stock, but it feels really good at the same time. And it does have some plastic like knurling in the plastic or grippy texture so you can easily grip it. I do actually really love the ergonomics of this stock as when you get behind it, um, it feels super natural, super comfortable. You don't have a lot of tension in your neck or head. You don't feel like you have to crane. And even without adjusting this up, this adjustable comb height, it, you fall really nicely into a natural position to look down your sight or your scope and be centered. So just really, really nice and ergonomic. Now coming forward, you do have a trigger that I believe is made by Seiko. And what's really unique about this trigger is that you can adjust the blade forward or back. Yes, so if you have a really small hand and it's in the right spot on your um, palm swell and you don't get appropriate trigger control and grip, you can actually adjust the trigger front or back to get it just in that right sweet spot. That is mind-blowing. That's very, very nice and an awesome feature, especially to see on a factory-produced rifle. Also that, but adjust two to four pounds, which is nice, so you can adjust this trigger down to two pounds. It comes with a very nice slight curved blade, very wide, and it is flat surface, so there's no texturing in it. Then coming up to the top of the receiver here, you have a set screw that is Torx head, and you have one in the bottom right before the trigger guard. These set screws can be removed, and this stock actually can break down. That's right, folks. This isn't just a regular hybrid hunting rifle. This is a takedown hybrid hunting rifle, and you can remove that very easily by simply loosening those two screws with the included tool they give you, which is right here, folks. So this tool is su super simple to use. The first thing you're going to do is remove the Torx head screwdriver from the plastic handle, and then you place it in here. Let me see if I can show you. It has two different ways it can be placed inside this handle, and there's a specific reason for that. They thought of everything. You simply Lefty loosey, righty tighty, you loosen up that top screw just a little bit and take note, it's not the one further back towards the buttstock. It's the one further towards the trigger guard area and towards the bolt shroud. Then you take your uh, handle and your included screw and you, or excuse me, screwdriver or Torx driver, and you put it in there in the opposite orientation, place it up into the recess right behind that trigger guard. This can be a little tricky. I did notice that when trying to get uh, into that lower Torx head screw, it can be a little bit difficult to get it in place for whatever reason. So you kind of have to fish around a little bit just to get it in there. Once it's in there, it's pretty easy. Once you loosen that, you can simply remove the entire buttstock just like that. It, pack this rifle in basically a tactical style case that's much shorter and easier to transport via TS rules or airline rules, much cheaper, easier to carry around and transport, especially if you're going on a plane, say to Alaska. And as you can see here, it has a nice post that is stainless steel. And then it has your aluminum chassis that comes out. And to put this back on is super simple. Slide it right down into the grooves is make sure you firmly seat the buttstock forward into its recess all the way, put the tool in its place and turn what would feel counterclockwise if you're um, in my orientation. Then come to your top screw, switch out the tool, put it in that top torque head screw and tighten it down basically to where it's nice and snug, but you don't need to worry about over tightening it as the system firmly clamps it down, very stable. Now coming forward to the bolt, it has a metal bolt shroud, which is nice and a two position safety. When it's on safe, it has a metal piece that comes out below the bolt shroud with a red dot on it, indicating that it is cocked and ready to fire, as well as there is a red dab or a dot to indicate that the safety is off and the firearm is ready to fire. When it's on safe, 
you cannot unlock the bolt, which is an absolutely fantastic feature that I wish was on all firearms, as when you're going through heavy brush, um, it's very nice because you don't have to worry about the bolt being knocked out of battery or coming open in brush and debris getting inside the chambering area. The tab for the safety appears to be real metal, has heavy knurling, and it's an excellent, excellent safety that just makes it super nice. Another feature that many people don't know is that when you push down on this tab in front of the safety, it stays on safe so you cannot fire, but you can unlock the bolt handle and remove the bolt. So basically, even though it's kind of a two-stage safety or two-position safety, it has that extra metal tab that you can push down on and you can remove the bolt without taking it off safety. Now, coming down to that trigger, as we mentioned earlier, it's adjustable two to four pounds. Let's go ahead, we've made sure this is empty. Oh my goodness, beautiful trigger. No perceivable creep, breaks like glass. Um, super smooth first stage trigger or single stage trigger. And it does have a tiny bit of over travel. It does have a little bit of perceivable over travel, but it's not spongy, grimy, or gritty. And it is very clean and crisp. So excellent, excellent trigger from Sako. And on the top here, like I said, has that integral scope base. Let's come down now to the bolt. To remove the bolt, you're gonna push in the tab on the left side and hold it down as you pull back on the bolt. The bolt has a stainless steel body and has a, like I said, a removable stainless steel bolt, or excuse me, bolt knob that's made of metal. And this one is heavy, heavily knurled. Then you have a very nice three lug system on the bolt. So you have three locking lugs on the bolt and a 70 degree bolt throw on this rifle, which is nicer than a 90 degree as it's easier to cycle quickly. Um, it has one plunger ejector and a Seiko style extractor. It does have a coned bolt nose, which allows it to go into its recesses a little bit more smooth and easily. This bolt is perhaps the smoothest and easiest to run out of any bolt I've ever played with. It's certainly as smooth as a Tika, and it rides back and forth in the receiver very, very nicely, just like butter. I would say that uh, the only bolt that I felt that maybe rides a hint smoother, um, but maybe not as quickly, is the um, Seekins Havoc. Um, but both excellent and just super, super smooth, easily passes that glide test. And the bolt lift on it, super smooth. It's not overly difficult, doesn't have any kind of weird catch to it, both on the upstroke and the downstroke. So let's go ahead and test the weight on that trigger from the factory. Um, it should break around three or three and a half pounds. Let's go ahead, utilizing our trigger gauge here. And it breaks at three and just over three and a half pounds. So just under three and a half pounds where we'd expect it. It's easy to adjust. There is a set screw that you simply adjust the weight and then there's a separate screw to adjust the trigger blade from going forward or backwards. Now, coming forward to the magazine well area, you can either get a three round magazine or a five round magazine. Um, this is made of polymer, but it feels to be very high quality. And it does have a fr front button release right here, um, which is spring loaded. What I love about this is the magazine goes in and out like super, super easy, super, super smooth. There's no hiccups, there's no like break in. I mean, you just natural, it's so natural. And the release tab is actually on the front of the magazine itself. So it goes, your, naturally your index finger lands right on top of it. Absolutely love the magazine system with this rifle and it is a single stack magazine, by the way. Now coming forward to that fore end, let me release it out of the holder right here. You know, it fits nicely in the hand. Um, it has two QD cups one on each side on the front of the foreend, so you can attach your sling there, which is absolutely perfect. Has side M-lock slots for side accessories, and it has three ports or slides on the bottom for M-lock, and this is made out of what I believe is metal or aluminum, so you can rest assured that this front piece is durable, and I love the fact that this has M-lock and QD uh, mounts in the front, so you can do all kinds of things with this is it's an absolutely fantastic, innovative, 
um, rifle for that hybrid scenario where you want something that you can use both for precision and hunting. By the way, the precision setup like this right now weighed in at eight pounds, eight ounces for me. And I believe the hunter setup, which is a thumb loop or thumb hole setup, uh, which you can actually swap out with this one in a matter of minutes. So you can swap from the hunter stock setup to this setup in a matter of minutes. And by the way, I did get it when there was a rebate. So I was able to get the precision stock and the hunter stock for one price um, and basically got the, st the second stock for free. The hunter stock comes in, I believe, at like 7.2 or 7.6 pounds, somewhere in there. So it is a bit lighter than the precision configuration. Um, I love the single stack magazine and how easy easily it operates and goes in and out. I love the fact that it has a full embedded aluminum chassis in both the front and the rear of the stock that just gives it so much integrity for repeatable accuracy. And I gotta say, apart from it sounding a little bit tinny here, when you tap on the back, the Palmer does sound and on the feel a little bit tinny and I cheap. love this rifle. Um, that tinny feel, I do wish they'd gone with a fiberglass outer or a carbon fiber outer, but then again, it would probably cost far more. The, the bolt runs absolutely spectacular in this receiver. The receiver does sit into basically V-block recesses. So it has a V-block style uh, recoil system for the receiver in both the front and the rear, kind of similar to a Ruger American setup. Um, where it's better than like a Tika T3X is that just has a separate recoil lug, piece of metal that sits in, into the stock, and then it sits in a groove on just the front of the receiver. This has grooves in both the front and the rear of the receiver and it sits right into that uh, aluminum chassis directly into those groups so it's actually a pretty uh, uh, good bedding system pretty uh, in there's a lot of integrity to it a lot of strength to it and rigidity to it um, but I still do like to see the recoil lug from the receiver being uh, built in one piece as part of the receiver, that is my preferred method, but this is a, a good alternative um, that still has plenty of integrity. Like I said, at a later day, we'll be taking this out on the range and doing range testing with it. We'll be reviewing the Hunter version with the Hunter conf configuration of this, and we'll also be taking apart the stock and showing you how to swap them out in another video. So anyways, stay tuned for those, and I look forward to seeing you back on the next review.